Hi everybody. Hello, I'm Ryan. I'm Bethany. And we are Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. Today we're going to be talking about Captain Pepe's Treasure Ahoy. This is oh. a design by Christos Giannakoulos and Manolis Zacharias. I hope I'm saying those right. Uh, and this is published by Haba. All right, so we are big fans of legacy games. We've played a, a whole bunch of them. We made a whole video about them at one point. Yeah. And uh, they're always kind of geared towards adults, right? They're a little more Not complicated. kind of. They are geared towards adults. <laughs> more involved, lots of text involved. Uh, let's do kind of have your strategy and the way it develops is if it's very, very advanced. Some really dark themes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so guess what? When we heard that there was a, a kids cooperative legacy game, Sign us up. <laughs> that is exactly what's going on here. This is a logic puzzle um, as we are solving it, and it's evolving and changing over time. We aren't going to give any spoilers, um, but what I do want to do is kind of show you the very, very base intro game. Um, that it kind of There's no spoilers in it. Just kind of show you how the logic in this game works, and then you can kind of go from there and, and see how it might, devolve, it might evolve and change over time. Let me give you a quick overview of how that base game works. And then after that, what's going to happen is we're going to bring our kids back, and they are going to give you some of their thoughts in their own uh, kid way, because as you know, kids are the experts when it comes to kids' games. Okay, here is our base starting setup for Captain Pepe. Basically what our goal is, is to get these little pawns to match the ore that matches their color. We're going to do that one at a time, taking turns in clockwise order. So on my turn, I might do something like this. I'm going to move green out of the way. The next person in turn order might move blue over, and the next person might move blue over again. So now blue's matching with its ore. All right, so now what we can do is we can get purple over here, maybe purple next to its ore. And now we can slowly get yellow where it needs to go. And then it freezes up to move green all the way to its ending location. So we just won this round. When we're actually going through the campaign, going through the scenarios, one scenario, one whole game is three rounds of this, trying to get everybody matched up. And eventually you're gonna come across some cards. The cards are gonna tell you how to randomize each one of the ores and the pawns as well. There are eight different treasure chests and you're gonna start opening those and they're gonna give you more and more special items, more and more challenges to go through. As you can see, this was the, the base starting game just to kind of teach kids how to play the game, what you're actually doing. But from here on out, it gets increasingly more and more difficult and more and more challenging and fun as well. Today we're gonna to be talking about Captain Pepe. It's upside down. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about Captain Pepe. Alright, so did you guys enjoy having a game that kind of changed and evolved the more you played it? Yeah. I thought it was a really interesting and unique feature. I thought it was really fun and unique. You'd never played a game like that before? Yeah, it was really fun. Not in the exact same way. What was one of your favorite things that you got to do in this game? The stickers. If you do a Good job, you would get the stickers. Yeah? What are you? I like um, being able to have a game that like, the entire family can play. That's good. What if, is there anything about the game that maybe you didn't like? I thought it was a bit too childish for me. But for people my sister's age, maybe a bit older and a bit younger, I think it would be really good. So for reference, she's six, you're ten. So maybe from like six to eight or nine would be a good range? Perfect. Did you enjoy it more when you were playing the easy parts at the beginning or when it was really, really challenging at the end? Really, really challenging at the end. It got more fun when it was challenging, you know? Yeah, I thought that when it was like harder and... I thought that when it was harder and a bit more challenging, it was fun and more like... Yeah. Goodbye, see you later, alligator. Goodbye. Well, we hope you enjoy the thoughts from our daughters, you know, the experts in kid gaming, because <laughs> they're the kids playing the games. <laughs> so I hope you enjoy that. And now we're just going to go over um, our thoughts on the game as well. So I thought that the play sessions were a perfect length with the story and everything. So there's 25 sessions all together in the game, but each game plays three of these logic puzzles. And they take, even with reading the story, about 10 minutes um, a piece, which is perfect for a child's attention span for getting through that. And so you can play this and then if they can, you can play another session. And then if they're done, it's fine. You can stop it. The 
story, the story stops right there. It plays session to session. So that worked out really, really well. I, at least I thought it worked out really well. You can play as many or as little as you want. And that little uh, 10, 15 minute session was just great, especially for something that you know has a lot in the future. All right. So I think, first of all, the game itself is was very smooth and easy to learn yes. to jump into. But then the way it added in the difficulty was was great. You know, it gave a little bit of story. The story kind of explained what was happening yeah. on the in the board, why we were adding this new thing, what you were doing, how the challenge was going to evolve. And then each challenge was just one little piece at a time. We're gonna give you this one new challenge. Yeah. And then you know what? We're gonna do it two twice in a row sometimes, just so you can really lock it in. But then we're gonna take that away and put in a new small challenge. Yeah. And then you're gonna play that once or twice. And then later on, maybe we'll come back and we'll take two of the challenges that you're already familiar with and put them together. So in that way, they kind of stair-stepped you yes. very smoothly and easily into each additional new challenge, each new level of difficulty that you're introduced to. I thought that was a perfect way for kids to be able to grasp it all while still um, being able to get to the, the final difficulty level that is where they wanted you. I also thought that the stickers were great. So one of the things with the Legacy game is that it changes. The gameplay changes. The game board changes. But the way that they did this in this game is they had this storybook that you were tracking all your missions on. And depending on how well you do on a mission determines what stickers you get that you can put on here. And also in the game, so there's 25 sessions. And in this game, there's only seven like special stickers, the seven treasures that you're looking for. And one of the things that I thought they did really well, especially to a child, child psychology, the, the payout of that is you found one of the seven treasures basically almost right away. So you're, the kids are hearing the story about how you're searching for these seven treasures. And then one of your very first gameplays, you do discover that right away. And I don't think that's much of a spoil, but I'm saying, spoiler, I'm saying that worked really well with getting the children to care about what was happening. They're invested early. They're invested early. It was it was a very smart move to do. And it also says in the rule book, like, the stickers you don't use, guess what? You just get those stickers. Kids and stickers is just, like, a great combination. I think that part of the discovery, too, is opening these boxes. I love playing legacy games and being able to open up the box. There's new components. There's new whatever it is. And obviously part of that is the challenges that go along with it, like I talked about earlier. Yeah. But the, the physical components themselves are just really, really exciting. It's almost like a new toy, you know? It's like opening a Christmas present, every little box that these kids get to open. Uh, so I thought that was just a really fun, exciting moment to kind of watch them rip it open and be like, ah, here's this new thing, and how does that work? What are we gonna do with this? That's a great moment. I love seeing that happen. Uh, one thing I do want to point out is, as adults, as parents, we are much more likely to know, understand the logic of the game. So it's very easy, especially for, for me. Like I, I love logic puzzles. I love them. I love Sudokus. I love all that kind of stuff. Give me Minesweeper. Give me all that stuff. So when a kid is playing this game, yeah. it's very easy to want to take over. I was very early trying to be like, okay, so you need to move this here, you need to move this here, move this here, you need to move this here. That's how we're going to play and go. And... <laughs> then the kids were just kind of like doing robotically what I said. Or if they actually messed up, I'd be like, no, 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 you remember what we said? We were over here. <laughs> and that kind of, I kind of zapped away a little bit of that fun early. And it wasn't until we kind of recalibrated a couple of games in, it was like, oh, you know what? This is the kid's game. It's not the dad game. <laughs> <laughs> so I would encourage you very early on, let the kids take the reins. It's okay if they do make a bad play. Um, Early on, especially, they are yeah. learning the game. Just let them get the logic down. It's going to be so much, the payoff for them is going to be so much better. They're going to want to play it more if they get a chance to make some decisions. Yeah, and you can replay it as much as you want if you want to get all the stickers. If you want to get the perfect score, yeah. you simply just start over again. Yeah, it's you can just do that. It's not, that's, I mean, the game tells you that you can do that. It's already built into it. Yeah, so I, for me, it was very hard to do that at first. Then I kind of made that realization. No, it's a kid's game. Let the kids play. They're going to have the maximum amount of fun with it. Yeah. Overall, I'm really impressed. Like, I know Ryan said that we were like, oh, a kid's legacy game, totally our thing. I'm thinking a kid's legacy game. How are they going to pull that really? off? <laughs> you think you can do that? You can. They did it. <laughs> I was super impressed with it, with, with how they did a story, how um, they they, like Ryan said, they stair-stepped everything into it, adding stickers. Kids love stickers, making the gameplays each session um, fairly sure. I, I'm just like really, really impressed with that. And I know that some of us as gamer parents love to introduce new things to our kids all the time because we're just like, oh, I've, I've heard about this game. I heard about this game. I heard about this game. I think this is one that will work because you have to play this game 
so many times that if your kid is getting wary of having to learn a new game all the time, this is it. You'll be doing this for a little while while you're playing the game, while you're learning those little modules and changing the game a little bit and while you're going through the story. I think this is perfect, especially for people, I mean, you know, you know what it's like. You just wanna get the most amount of games in front of your kids and your kids are kind of like, I'm sick and tired of learning a new game. Solution. You both, you get to learn this stuff and it's the same game. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I agree, I mean, with fun, colorful characters, bright, the oars and the boat, all that stuff is very cool. The theming worked great. The story yeah. was, was oh, you were along for the ride. Everything about this game was kind of a hit for our family. Um, it, after I figured out how to not quarterback the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, this is a fun one. Yeah, everybody, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you can see our videos as they come out. Until then, you can find us in all of these places. You guys, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. You guys, thanks so much for watching. Uh, this game was provided to us by a publisher for in exchange for a fair and honest review. And if you want to see more stuff, check out over here to see something we think you might like. And over here, we think uh, that YouTube has picked out a great video for you. You're going to love. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.